Yes. We just want you to get revived, and then we want to equip you uh, so that uh, so that you can become the Reformation. And so that's really our heart is that you get revived, you become equipped, and that you get to become a Reformation. You become a reformed person who goes out and brings Reformation uh, to your sphere of influence, to your family, uh, to your neighborhood, to your city, to your province, to your nation, and to the nations around the world. And uh, I believe that's the heart of God. You know, God wants us to, 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 to be revived. He wants us to be equipped. You know, that's what Ephesians 11 really is all about. Ephesians 11, you know, where it says that, that, uh, that he gave us, you know, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And, that, and that's really, you know, uh, you know, being revived, that's being equipped and going out and becoming the Reformation. Uh, that's what Jesus did. That's what the, the first century church did all through the book of Acts is they brought reformation. And it may not look like things had changed, you know, uh, you know, governmentally wise and, and pharisaical wise, but there was a lot of change that was taking place. And, uh, uh, you know, that was happening within the church and outside the church, uh, you know, and, and, and all it takes is to read the book of Acts and discover that there was so much more going on. And so, so we want to encourage you tonight uh, that if you're looking for a church, you're looking for a, a place to worship, you know, and you're in the Brantford area, uh, you know, uh, we invite you to come. We're, we're meeting at 125 Blackburn Drive uh, in the uh, city of Brantford right now as we're unable to go into our facility. And, uh, and so you're welcome to come at, uh, you know, for our services Sundays at 6 o'clock. And then, of course, our Bible studies are Tuesday nights uh, on Zoom and, and or you can come and meet us at the house here at 125 Blackburn Drive in the city of Brantford, Ontario. And so God bless you. And uh, we're just going to get into the word tonight. And uh, we're going to discover what God, uh, what God's saying, uh, what I believe He's saying to us, what what He wants to see in us and through us, and and so tonight I'm going to bring a message. I'm really continuing on a series, uh, you know, called the Language of God. But this is the word, the title God gave me is that living in the flow. You know, how many want to live in the flow of the Spirit? You know, I don't know about you, but I want to live in the flow of the Spirit every day of my life. I want, I want to live out of His flow, uh, you know, that the, that the Spirit is moving through me. You know, moving in me and moving through me, uh, uh, you know, to bring change and transformation everywhere I go. And so that's really, I believe, the heart of God. And so let's turn over to Acts chapter uh, 2, Acts chapter 2. And, uh, and, you know, part of the message really is about flowing in, 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 in the spirit, flowing in, in our spiritual language. And, uh, and God wants you to flow in his spiritual language. And so let's just read the text here in Acts chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 1. It says, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. You know, and, and, and it filled the whole house where they, were, where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, and uh, I mean, that's the key right there, as the Spirit gave them, uh, them utterance. And I believe the Spirit of God is continually releasing His utterance. And, and the question that we, we, we've been talking about and what I've been sharing is really, are we willing to open our mouth and let Him fill it? You know, that's really where utterance comes, is when we open our mouth uh, and, uh, and, and let Him fill it. Uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, the word open, to open wide, you know, we see that in Psalm 81, and, and uh, you know, it literally means to make room. We, we're called to make room for Him, and as we make room for Him, uh, He'll begin to fill us, furnish us, supply us, influence us, and, 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 and fill us, and saturate us. Uh, with him, you know, saturate us with his language, saturate us with his character, saturate us with his authority, saturate us with his anointing. And, uh, and so I just want to encourage you tonight, you know, that here we see in the book of Acts, you know, and it's not just for the book of Acts. It wasn't just for the 120 in the upper room. It wasn't just for the disciples. You know, it's for every believer to get baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues that the power of God would be demonstrated out of us so that, so that people begin to see a wonderful working Miracle working, power working God. He's not just a God of word. He's a God 
of power. He's a God that loves to manifest His presence. He's a God that loves to manifest His glory. He's a God that loves to, to manifest His power. And He chooses to manifest it through His people. And that's what we see here in the book of Acts. That He chose to manifest the power of God, the power of His wonderful working uh, spirit in the, the 120, in you and me, so that we can become His witnesses in the earth. And, uh, and so we see that here. But now go over with me to John chapter 14. Uh, because, uh, you know, as I was studying, you know, and, and you know, just recognizing that this is Father's Day. This is, this is a, a, a glorious day that, uh, that He wants us to, you know, to honor Him, you know, as, as, as our Heavenly Father. And, uh, and, I, and I saw this and I was like, wow. You know, this is so awesome uh, that how gracious and how glorious uh, our Heavenly Father is. And look at this in John chapter 14 with me, starting in verse 15. It says, if you love me, this is Jesus talking, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And I will not leave you orphans, for I will come to you. Now, now I want you to see some things here, you know, uh, in, in this aspect. And like I said, we've been talking about the language of God and how his language, um, you know, is a language of love. You know, his, his language is a language of faith. His language is a language of, of hope, you know. And you might be sitting there and you might be, you know, in, in living in some hopelessness, some circumstances, some situations. And I want to declare to you that his language is a language of hope. Yes. He wants to bring hope in your life. You know, he wants to bring great expectation in your life. And that's really what hope is, great expectation, confident, assured expectation. And he wants to bring that in your life tonight. And, uh, you know, uh, so Jesus is talking here. And he says, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, what's fascinating to me is Jesus in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, he said this. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you've been endued with power. In other words, he gave a command to the disciples. He gave a command to 500 people. We know, according to the book of Corinthians, that he commanded 500 people to tarry in Jerusalem. And he's saying here, you know, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. In other words, you'll be obedient. The love of God is, is, is obedient to what he has said. That's the love of God, to be obedient to what he has said. And so we demonstrate our love to what he has said and being obedient to what he has said. That's how love is demonstrated. You know, we know that Jesus demonstrated his love by, by uh, you know, dying for us, by, by submitting to the will of the Father and, 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 and surrendering his life and, and dying for us and shedding his blood. And he demonstrated his love and God demonstrated his love by sending Jesus. Right? Sending himself. I mean, Jesus is, is God in the flesh. He, he sent himself, uh, and, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he does that. You know, and, and, and what's fascinating here is when you look at the context of this, he, you know, Jesus is saying, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Now, now I mean, just think about that. You know, he will give you another helper. Well, who's the other helper? It's the Holy Spirit. And we see that in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the Father sending the Helper to come live upon us. Not, not just to dwell in us, but to come upon us and clothe us with His power. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that, that, that He wants to clothe you tonight with His power. He wants you to encounter Him. He wants you to engage, uh, you know, the fullness of the Helper. You know, the fullness of the Helper. And part of the fullness of the Helper is the baptism of the Spirit. Part of the fullness of the Helper is allowing the Spirit to speak into your spirit man so that out of your spirit man you speak the language of God, not just in the Word, you know, not just the Word of God, you know, the written Word of God, you know, that, that's being, you know, that needs to be declared out of her mouth. You know, but he also wants you to declare the spirit language, the, 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 the spirit language, the bridal language, the, you know, the, the speaking in tongues 
uh, is, is the bridal language. It's the language of God in the spirit. And he wants you to manifest that in the spirit. And your mind, your will, and emotions aren't going to understand what's being said. But your spirit, man, is receiving everything that you're declaring in the spirit, in that, in that, in that tongue, that heavenly tongue or earthly tongue, whatever it may come out. Uh, that, that is coming out of you uh, and, and is impacting your spirit, man, and causing your spirit, man, to come alive. Causing your spirit, man... To, to, to rule your life, causing your spirit man to, to impact your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. And, and, and so, you know, so he says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. So, you know, thinking of Father's Day and honoring fathers, you know, when we honor God, when we honor Father God, you know, what we're really saying is, Lord, I receive everything you want to give to me. I receive, uh, you know, the baptism of the Spirit. I receive the indwelling presence of the Spirit. I receive tongues. I receive power. I receive all those things. You know, so when we're honoring, we're, we're really saying, God, I want to receive everything that you have for me so that I can be your witness in the earth, right? So that I can be your witness. And, and, and so, you know, there's another thing he says here. Uh, he, says, he says that the Spirit of truth, look at this. In verse um, 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. The sp everybody say the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Okay, now say the spirit of truth. Spirit spirit of truth. truth. So when you and I speak in tongues, we're actually speaking the spirit of truth. That's powerful. I don't know if you've seen that before. Mm -hmm. When we pray in the spirit... When we pray, we're speaking the, the, the absolute truth. We're, we're speaking the spirit of truth. Now, now let me just uh, uh, say this. The word truth in Hebrew uh, literally means a nurturing father. That's what the, in, in, in the Hebrew context, the word truth means a nurturing father. I love that because, because what we begin to discover is that when the reason why he's given us spiritual tongues, the reason why he's given us the spirit language is to nurture us in the spirit, to be a father that nurtures us in the spirit. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You know, that he desires to, to, to nurture us in the spirit because, because we're a spirit being. Mm. We're a spirit being. See, yeah. we, 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 you know, when we get saved... Uh, we become a spirit being. And, 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 and this is key because before we got saved, we didn't live by our spirit. We lived by our mind, our will, and emotions. We lived by our soul. And, and when you and I get born again, we, we, we are, our spirit gets born again. And we now have to transition from living by our natural self to living by our spiritual nature. Who we were really created to be. We were created to be a spirit that possesses a soul, possesses a mind, possesses our will, possesses our emotions, that lives in a body. And so we have to transition now on how do we learn and develop to live by the Spirit first. And when we live by the Spirit first, then the natural begins to manifest uh, normally. It begins to manifest normal. And everybody say normally. Normal. Right? You know, but if we're living by our soul, uh, that's not normal. Now, now, before we got saved, it was, quote, normal. But that's not normal. That was never God's yes. design for us. It was not God's normal place for us to live by the soul. You know, we are a spirit being to live, that's called to live by the spirit. So think about a baby. You know, when a baby's born in the natural, you know, uh, a baby, uh, you know, uh, gets born. And, and what do they start to do? They start to make noises. They, they start to, you know, try to talk. And I remember when I, I mean, that was like 20, 20 years ago, 21 years ago when we had our, you know, children, you know, but I still remember, you know, when, when they tried to speak and, you know, and we would say, you know, say dad, dad, right? You know, and, and they'd go goo, 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 you know, or, or ha, ha, you know, or, or la, la, you know, whatever, right? And, and, you know, and in their language, they were saying dad. Yeah. They were saying mom, weren't they? Right? You know, now to us it didn't sound like that, but to them, that's what it was. Now, you know, and goo goo gaga, you know, and, and you know, all the hey, hey, you know, and, and uh, you know, all this sort of stuff. But, but, you know, it's funny, when we become born again, 
you know, there's a new language that comes. There's, you know, when we get baptized in the Spirit, there's a new language that comes, and it starts as, as those sounds. It starts as da, 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 be, be, ba, 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 ra, ba, ba. And, 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 but, you know, but he wants it to flow like a river. He wants tongues to flow like a river. Now, you, you're, you're probably saying, well, what is he doing? You know, I, I've never heard tongues before. I, you know, I, I'll just declare to you right now that the Spirit of the Lord wants you to, uh, to utter the, the utterance of the Holy Ghost. He wants you to utter things in the spirit realm because in the spirit realm is where things change in the natural realm. You can't change the natural realm by natural speaking. You can only change the natural realm by a spiritual language, by the language of God, right? And uh, and so we see this, that he wants to give us this helper, he, and, and he's given us this helper, and this helper is much more than somebody that just dwells in us. Look at this. In verse... Uh, 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 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Notice there's, a, there's an and here. In other words, there's a distinction here that there's a dwelling and uh, a, a dwelling with and a dwelling in. Okay, notice that there's a dwelling with and a dwelling in. Now, now, I want you to see this because, because the truth is, notice it says that the Holy Spirit dwells with you and is in you. When you dwell with someone, they talk to you and you talk to them. At least that's what's supposed to happen, right? You know, you know have you ever, you know, been around? I mean, there's times where Ellie and I have, you know, silent, quiet times, you know, but the reality is that's not the fullness of our marriage, you know? Uh, I mean, we like to communicate to each other and talk with each other, you know? Well, the same thing goes for the Holy Spirit. He wants to talk to you, you know? And, and sometimes He talks to us, you know, through the reading of the Scriptures. Sometimes He talks to us through an inner voice and all those type of things. But I want to I want to encourage you that, that He talks talks to us when we pray in the spirit he's talking to us and he's not only talking to us we're talking to him right because what we're doing is we're repeating what he's saying that's what tongues is it's a repeating it's an echoing of what the spirit is already saying <laughs> right when the i mean think about it, on the day of pentecost when the day of pentecost had fully come they heard a sound from heaven and then they began to speak in other tongues. In other words, the word sound there is the, it's the Greek word echo, echos. It's where, we, it's where we get the English word echo. They echoed heaven. They echoed the spirit. They echoed what the Father was saying, right? You know, in a spiritual language. And, and it manifested so that hearers could hear it, you know? And so there was a miracle of speaking, but there was also a miracle of hearing that was taking place. And I talked about that a few weeks ago. You know, but I want you to see this. He says, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So when you dwell with someone, you continue with them, right? So in other words, the Holy Spirit's continuing with you and, and, and you're continuing with him, right? And, uh, and then it says, you know, this word dwell can also mean to stay in a given place of expectancy. How many want to stay in a given place of expectancy? Right? Now, I don't know about you, but I want to stay in that given place of expectancy. Yeah. You know? and, and, and really, to be honest with you, that given state of expectancy is found in the Holy Ghost. It's found in tongues. It's found in the, the declaration and the speaking of tongues. And when we engage in what we're speaking in, when we engage with the Holy Spirit, and we engage with the tongues we're releasing, we will stay in a state of expectancy. So if you want to stay in a state of expectancy, it comes out of speaking in tongues, right? And, and declaring tongues out of your mouth and engaging in the spirit with what's being said. Now, let me, let me just define the word engage because what you, you'll, you'll get a hold of this. The word engage means to become involved with. So when you and I speak in tongues, we're actually becoming involved with the Holy Spirit. But now you gotta, you, 
this is the fascinating thing about tongues. So the more you and I pray in the Spirit and engage, in other words, engage with Him, we are playing uh, or we are declaring things in the Spirit. We are, we, we are uh, causing things to, to change in our life, right? See, how expectant are you? Right? I don't know about you, but that's a challenge sometimes, right? You know, to stay in that place of expectancy. And what I've discovered over the years is that the more we pray in the Spirit, the more we stay in a place of expectancy. The more we stay, uh, you know, where we are confidently in expectation that the Spirit of God is going to do what He says He's going to do. Right? I want you to think about this. In, in Genesis chapter 1, uh, it says this, uh, you know, in verse 2, it says that, that the Spirit of God was hovering or brooding over the waters. And the word hover or brood means to incubate. He was incubating. In other words, he was in this place of expectancy, waiting for, this, for, the, for the Father to speak, so that when the Father spoke, what the Spirit of God, what he was actually incubating, would be made manifest when God spoke. In other words, when you and I pray in the Spirit, when we speak in tongues, what we're actually doing is incubating, brooding, and incubating what the Spirit of God is saying in the spirit realm and in our spirit. And when that begins to change, when that begins to take place, and we engage with that, and we, and we um, um, uh, occupy what He's saying, then it becomes made manifest in our life. When we live in a state of expectancy, there will be a flow of the Spirit. And I want to suggest that when we speak in tongues, it is an expression of our expectancy in the Holy Spirit. And so we declare the wonderful works of God, the truth of the Word of God, and the power of the Word of God, the deep things of God, and the utterances of what the Holy Spirit is incubating over our lives. Your brain, your intellect, and reason is not functioning in this. Let me say it again. Your brain, your intellect and reason is not functioning in this. Your spirit man is. That's key. We need to understand that it's our spirit man that is being built. It's our spirit man that is, that is grabbing a hold of it. And, and we need our spirit man to be built and established so that our soul lives from that. Okay? Now, when we speak in tongues, it builds our spirit. It builds our faith. It builds our hope, which is our confident expectation, and it builds our love for Him. And notice it says the Holy Spirit is in you, right? So not only does He want to dwell with you, not only does He want to partner with you, not only does, you know, He wants to be in you. The word in there is, a, it's a, how many know the word in is a small word, right? It's a small word, but it's a powerful word. It's a word that, that literally means uh, uh, to be in or on, to be fixed, right? So in other words, when we're, when, you know, when, when, what Jesus is trying to get across to us is that, is that he, he's, he's saying that the Holy Spirit is going to dwell with you and he's going to be fixed with you. He's going to be fixed in you and he's going to be fixed on you. And when we pray in the Spirit, that fixing becomes uh, established in our life, Right? It's a small word, but it's a powerful word. He's a part of you, right? And, and so being a part of who you are, he wants to speak mysteries to you and through you. He wants to declare things out of your mouth and out of my mouth, which is the utterance of the Spirit, which is speaking in tongues. Now go with me over to John chapter 7. John chapter 7, right? Because, because Jesus is, you know... He's imparting something into the disciples. He's imparting something into you and I to recognize, do we want the fullness of the promise? Yes. Right? And are we living out of the fullness of the promise? Right? See, see, see the baptism of the Spirit brings us into the fullness of the promise. Let me say that again. The baptism of the Spirit brings us into the fullness of the promise. Because if all I'm doing is living from the indwelling presence of the Spirit, I'm not living in the fullness of His promise. Isn't that interesting? Right? He's calling us to live out of the fullness of His promise. Right? And the fullness of His promise is everything that He does. Everything that the Holy Spirit is and everything that the Holy Spirit does, 
He wants us to replicate. He wants us to be a part of. He wants us to, to live from. And so the utterance of the Holy Spirit is when we speak in tongues, and that's not all of it, that's some of it, uh, but he wants us to live from that. And as we begin to do that, things will begin to transform and change in our life. So look at this in John chapter 7. John chapter 7, starting in verse 37, says this, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now we've got to recognize that this dimension of the Holy Spirit Jesus is talking about is not just the indwelling presence of the Spirit, it's also the baptism of the Spirit. Interesting. Right? It's talking about the fullness of the Spirit. Watch this. He said, he said in verse 3, He who believes on me, right? Who, he who believes on Jesus, as the Scriptures have said. Well, listen. Isaiah 28, verses 11 to 12. Let me read it to you. It says, For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people, to whom he said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Right? So in essence, in the Old Testament, the, the prophet Isaiah is prophesying that there would be a people, God's people, who would speak in tongues. Amen. That, that there would be a people that would speak in tongues, that would speak with stammer lips, which represents the speaking in tongues, uh, and, and that that would bring rest and would cause them to leave weariness and that they would be refreshed. Let me say that again. That the baptism of the Spirit, the, the evidence of speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues brings a, a, a rest to you. It brings refreshing to you. Right? I, and I've discovered this over the years. The more I pray in the Spirit, the more refreshed I get. You know, the less I worry, the less I get stressed. Right? I want to just encourage you right now, those that are watching and those that are listening here. I want to encourage you that, that, that the more you pray in the Spirit, the more evidence of His rest, the more evidence of His promise, the more evidence of His refreshing gets manifest in your life. Right? Could it be that the reason why we're so stressed as Christians and, and, and unbelievers, that why we're so stressed and weary is because we don't engage with the Spirit and speak in the language that He's called us to speak. And, and, and because we don't understand and comprehend it in our natural mind, we, we fail to receive what He wants us to receive. Right? We fail to live out of rest. We fail to live out of, out of a refreshing which He wants us to live from. Right? And I, I've just discovered this over the years, that the more I pray in the Spirit the more I recognize that I'm at rest, the more I recognize that I'm being refreshed, you know. And so just to encourage you that, you know, it comes out of praying in the Spirit, but then you've got to engage in that. You can't just, you know, I, I mean, there's times where I pray in the Spirit and nothing's changed, nothing's happened, you know, how about you, right? You know, you just, oh, nothing's changed, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, but I've learned something, that it's because I never engaged with the Holy Spirit. I've just spoken, but never engaged. So I believe there's this, this, this thing that God wants us to do. He wants us to, to not only speak the language, but He wants us to engage in the Spirit with what He's saying in the Spirit. You know, and, 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 and not disconnect because we don't understand it. And, uh, and so, look at this. He says, He who believes on me, right? So the Scriptures tell us, right, that, 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 that we would speak in tongues. Matthew, uh, sorry, Mark chapter 16, you know, uh, you know says, says to us that, that, uh, you know, these signs shall follow those who believe. You know, it says, They shall cast out demons, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And they shall speak in new tongues, right? You know, and so, you know, there's this evidence that, that Jesus is saying, Who believes on me as the scriptures have said? Scriptures tell us that, that we have the ability to speak in tongues. Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, you know, uh, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19. 
excuse me, 19. I mean, there's all kinds of places that, that tell us and discuss things uh, and, and reveal to us that, that he's calling us to those things. And so, so I just want to encourage you that the more we believe what he said, the more we'll recognize uh, those things, the more we'll see from his perspective. Look at this. He says, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart, right, or out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. How many want some rivers to flow out of you? Amen. Right? But here's what's fascinating to me. The Bible also says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So in essence, what Jesus is saying is there'll be a, a there'll be something that will flow out of you, right? And I want to suggest that one of those rivers that that's going to flow out of you is the river of speaking in tongues. It, it's say it's a river, it's a river, right? It's a river. Think about a river for a minute. You know, when a river's flowing, what does it do? It moves. It, it moves, right? It, it, it's transporting things, it's delivering things, it's depositing things, right? You know, and sometimes you can look at a river and, and, and see that it's transporting, but you don't always see what it's depositing, right. right? Have you ever noticed that? You don't see what it's depositing, but at the same time, in the Spirit, when we pray in the Spirit, we don't see what it's actually depositing by the natural eye. We don't, we don't comprehend it, you know, through, the, through our intellect and through our reason, but something is being deposited on the inside of us when we pray in the Spirit that, 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 that He's calling us, you know, in an essence, He's calling us to be awakened in the Spirit and to seek Him in the Spirit. And then we'll get in, an interpretation of what He's actually speaking to us because we're drawing close to Him, because we're, we're seeing from His perspective, right? Not from ours. And so, so you know, say, say a river. River. Right? See, he wants the river of tongues to flow out of us. See, I believe tongues is to be a river in us and a fire upon us. Yes. Right? You know, it's cloven tongues of fire on the day of Pentecost. So there should be a fire on us and there should be a river flowing through us. Right? You know, so really, when we pray in the Spirit, it should set a fire. Right? Everybody say, set a fire. Set a fire. Right? See, you know, what's fascinating is God started the fire. <laughs> Right? God brought the fire. Yeah. But the question is, is are you, are you flaming that fire? Are you, are you, are you the, you know, are you uh, kindling those flames? Are you, are, are, you know, and when we pray in the spirit, we're actually kindling the fire and keeping the fire going. Yeah. Right? I don't know about you, but I know for me, when, when I stop, you know, when I, when I don't pray in the spirit, or when I haven't prayed in the spirit for a period of time, I recognize my fire is gone. Right? I recognize that, that I've lost some of my fire. And then I get back into praying in the Spirit and all of a sudden my fire is there again. Why? Because it, 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 it is causing that flame to, to keep burning. It's causing that passion to keep burning. It's causing transformation to take place. It's cause, and even though you don't see the transformation right away, it is bringing transformation to your life. Right? So don't be discouraged. Don't stop praying in the Spirit because you don't see nothing taking place. I want to encourage you, keep praying in the Spirit yeah. until you see change. And when you start to see change, keep praying in the Spirit more. Never stop praying in the Spirit because it's going to advance some things. It's going to bring some change in your life. It's going to transport His Word to you. It's going to deliver His Word to you. It's going to deposit things in your spirit, man, that have never been deposited before. Say, let my tongue be a fire. Right? Let my tongue be a river of life. Right? Let my tongue deliver His Word. Right? Let my tongue deliver his wonderful works. His wonderful yes. works. Let, my Let my tongue be a tongue, be a tongue. That, paves that paves new things. Think about a raging river. A raging river changes the course. Why? Because it begins to change the, the landscape. It begins to change the, 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 the direction of the river. The, and I want to just declare to you and to declare to me that the more we pray in the Spirit, the more we begin to bring uh, new paths in our life. God, because God, God begins to open up a new pathway. He begins to change the directions uh, of our life. He begins to shift some things in our life. So be encouraged the more we pray in the Spirit. He, something is taking place. Everybody say, something's taking place. Something's taking place. Right, see, it's time to stop thinking 
and live living from our reason. It's time to stop living from our reason and our intellect and start living from his language of faith, his language of hope, and his language of love. Turn with me to the book of Jude. The book of Jude, uh, just before the book of Revelation, the book of Jude, um, and uh, it's one chapter. And uh, just as you're turning there, I'm, I mean, you remember the story in Judges chapter 12? I preached on this uh, uh, probably, I don't know, four or five weeks ago. Uh, but in Judges chapter 12, there was, there was this battle going on between the Gileadites and, and, and the Ephraimites. And, and the Gileadites were, you know, uh, were, uh, were defeating the, the Ephraimites. And, and, uh, and there was this river that, that needed to be crossed. And, 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 uh, and so when someone would cross, the, the Gileadites came up with this, this word that, that they would say, uh, Shibboleth. And, uh, and they would ask the, the, uh, the, the person to say Shibboleth. And, and if they said Shibboleth, then they, they, they knew that they were a part of the Gileadites. But, if they, but, but the Ephraimites could not pronounce Shibboleth. They could only say Sibboleth. Think about that for a minute. Right? They, you know, the Gileadites could say Shibboleth, but the Ephraimites could only say Sibboleth. Right? The word shibboleth means to flow like a river. <laughs> right? So they knew that they were, that they were uh, a, a part of their tribe. They knew they were part of their tribe because they, had, they could say shibboleth. But when they said shibboleth, they knew that they were a part of the enemy. Interesting. In other words, I want to just say this. That, that, that when we pray in the Spirit, the enemy can't cop. The enemy can't interrupt. The enemy can't intercept. The, the deep thing that God's speaking over your life. Hallelujah. 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 Right? He can't, he can't interpret what's being said. That's why God uses the spiritual language. He uses this bridal language to communicate to his people, to our spirit man. And our spirit man is fully alive and fully awake, awakened to what's being said. And, 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 and the enemy can't intercept it. Right? There's power in praying in the Spirit because the enemy can't intercept it. He has no ability to intercept it. He lost that ability. He lost that power. Oh, Jesus, help us. <laughs> right? You know, we, we need to be a yes. people who pray in the Spirit. Right? Pray in this language so that the river flows. Say, the river flows. The river flows. Right? I don't about you. I want this river to flow greater. I want this yeah. river to flow stronger. Yeah. I want this river to flow in a glorious way. I want this river to, to manifest in ways of a river's never manifested before in me and through me. Out of your innermost being, there shall flow rivers of living water. In other words, when you speak in tongues, it's a river of living water. It's a river of living water. Hallelujah. Right? So in, in, in the book of Jude here, let, let's look at this. In the book of Jude, verse 20. Verse 20 says this. It says, but you, beloved. Everybody say beloved. Beloved. Right? The word beloved is, is referencing the, the church, the bride of Christ. The, you know, so, but you, bride, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. What's eternal life? Knowing the Father and Jesus as the Christ. That's what eternal life is. It's not just a place you go to when you die. Mm -hmm. It's a person and the person of God, yes. right? That, that you become to know. So, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. When you pray in the Spirit, you'll keep yourself in the love of God. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. When you pray in the Spirit, you will keep yourself in the love of God. Now you say, well, but pastor, what about, you know, what Paul said, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you know, if I pray in, in you know, in, in, in an earthly language or a heavenly language, you know, the tongues of angels, and I have not love. Listen, if you are pursuing God, you're pursuing love. Amen. And if you're, if you're, if you're not, if you're not living in love, then, then, then you are, you are sounding, you know, like you're just a, a, a nothing, really, you know, when it comes down to it. what you've said is nothing. It, it means nothing. But the truth of the matter is, is how can we speak in tongues, really? To be honest with you, how can we speak in tongues and not be in love? Yeah. 
Really? Right? I, I, I mean, I mean, you know, so I believe, you know, he's saying here, you know, build up your most holy, praying in the spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God. In other words, stay focused in the love of God. Stay focused. What is the love of God? Being obedient to what he has said. Right? The more we pray in the spirit, the more we should become obedient to what he has said. Right? Now, but you, beloved, building yourselves up. Think about this. What are you building? Right? What are you and I building? Right? He says here, build yourselves up on your most holy faith. By what? Praying in the Spirit. When we pray in the Spirit, we build our faith. Let me say that again. When we pray in the Spirit, we build our faith. How many of us walk around with a low dimension of faith? How many of us walk around, right? Come on, let's be honest, right? You know, I believe it comes down to the fact that we haven't built ourselves in the faith of God because we haven't released the utterance of the Holy Ghost. We haven't engaged with the utterance of the Holy Ghost, with the utterance of speaking in tongues. We haven't engaged in that. And so we stop building our faith and we wonder why our faith gets torn down. Listen to this. The word build means to build upon. It means to establish, to increase, to strengthen, and also means to rear up. So let me break that down. Because it's fascinating. What's he want us to do? It means really to build upon his language. Build upon his abilities. To build upon his power. To build upon his ways. Okay? So when I pray in the spirit, what am I doing? I'm building upon his language. I'm building upon his abilities. I'm building upon his authority. I'm building upon his power. Isn't that interesting? Right? So what are you building? Right? Yeah. Right? So, so the key is, is that Jesus said, in, as we read in John chapter 7, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Right? So in other words, that there's a river that's being built and established, a river of life that's being established in me when I pray in the Spirit. Right? Rivers, refreshing, rest, mm -hmm. peace, joy, right? All those things come out of the speaking in tongues. That's why the devil doesn't want the church speaking in tongues. Because there's power in it. There's mm -hmm. strength in it. There's new abilities in it. There's, there's new dimensions of the spirit in it. There's, I mean, that's why there's so much controversy in the church, right? Because the enemy brings confusion. The enemy brings uh, 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 um conflict he brings strife in those areas and God's saying listen I gave you tongues not to bring strife but to bring unity to unify you to to bring strength to you to bring abilities to you so that you could build your faith that you could be established in your faith hallelujah isn't that awesome that's the graciousness of our God right and we need to honor him by receiving what he's given to us right now watch this it means also to rear up to rear up means to rise up above yes. our circumstances. Yes. Hallelujah. Right? See, see, when we pray in the Spirit and we engage with the Spirit, right? I'm not just talking where we just, you know, we just ramble on. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is we're speaking in tongues and then we're engaging mm -hmm. with the Spirit. And when we do, we become so established that we begin to rear up and rise up above our situations and circumstances. Mm -hmm. I have found this to be so true. You know, I remember, you know, not that long ago, it was only a few years ago, and uh, when, uh, when Nate, uh, our son, was uh, uh, in India and, uh, uh, um, and things happened. And, uh, you know, uh, man, God did some amazing things, right? And, and I just remember praying in the Spirit. You know, I just remember praying in the Spirit, and as I prayed in the Spirit, you know, that brought encouragement to me. It brought, you know, and, and, and to Allison and to the whole situation. You know, there was encouragement that took place. There was, there was stuff that was taking place on, on the inside of us. And it was bringing strength to us. It was bringing a river of life to us. It was bringing, you know, uh, just a, a, a place of expectancy. And, you know, you may not come out with the same result as what we came out with. But the truth of the matter is... Is that, is that God is still establishing you. He's still bringing hope to you. He's still bringing those things to you. So be encouraged in that area. You know, so he goes on. He says, 
you know, in this whole aspect of building your most holy faith. Think about it. Your most holy faith. Right? Say, my most my holy faith. faith. You know, in the natural, let me say this. In the natural, we have an immune system. Right? Mm -hmm. Say, I have an immune system. I have an immune system. Right? You know, uh, which is supposed to fight off bacteria and viruses yes. and yes. sickness. Right? That's what it's designed to do. Right? Amen. Say, amen. amen. Right? But how many know in the natural realm, our immune system gets depleted? Yes. Right? And doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Yes. Right? Well, let me say this. In the spirit... Or in, in, in the spirit, speaking in tongues is likened unto a spiritual immune system. Amen. The more we pray in the spirit, the more we become spiritually immune mm -hmm. to our situations and circumstances. Oh, yeah. Right? Where our circumstances don't defeat us, we defeat them. Yeah. Right? Isn't that awesome, John? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I mean, that's so powerful. So the more we pray in the spirit... We're able to rear up and overcome yes. our situations and circumstances rather than, than those overcoming us. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, so you know, here, here's what's fascinating. It's scientifically proven that when believers speak in tongues, it causes their natural immune system to strengthen. Hallelujah. Scientifically proven. Yes. Yeah, they did a, a scientific study and they were able to prove that those that spoke in tongues... Their, their immune system was built up greater than those that didn't. Mm -hmm. Such a powerful thing, right? Mm -hmm. Speaking in tongues is so powerful. That's why, I mean, I mean, think about it. Why are we afraid of viruses? Why are we afraid of the flu? Why are we afraid of all this stuff? I believe, you know, if we just, you know, dig deeper into the Lord, if we just, if we just recognize that He has given us an ability to become immune, I mean, think about it in the natural. In the natural, the, when, when, when we were growing up as kids, kids playing in the dirt. Yeah. We don't have a lot of kids playing in the dirt anymore. They're playing on their video games and they're yeah. playing inside and all this sort of stuff. I, I believe the reason why there's so much infection in the world is because we stopped playing in the dirt. Play in the Amen. dirt. Get in the dirt. I mean, I remember going yeah. camping, you know. I, I went up to Algonquin Park one time and went with a buddy, and, and we're up there, and, and we're cooking away, and all of a sudden our sausages fell into the fire, you know. <laughs> We're like, well, pull the sausage out of the fire and, and just pl put it in our mouth and eat with the ashes on it and everything. Who cares, you know? We ate it with a little bit of dirt. Food falls on the floor. Eat a little bit of dirt. It'll build your immune system. Man, come on, right? Right? I just don't get worried about all that stuff. Just eat it, you know? Get over it, and, and your body will begin to establish and build some things and, and cause your immune system to, to, to develop and fight off disease, Right? You know, so if you want, you know, go and get into some dirt. Do some gardening. Get into some dirt. You know, get dirt on your hands. Get dirt on your feet. Get dirt on, you know, uh, you know, wherever you need to get dirt on, just get dirt on. Right? You know, it'll help you. Praise God. Hallelujah. But, you know, let me just say in the spirit, you know, get some dirt on. Right? Get in the spirit and start praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, you know, think about this. He says, out of your belly, out of your heart shall flow. Your heart is a soil. Your heart is like soil, right? Get into the soil of your heart and begin to pray in the Spirit. And you'll begin to establish some new things and grow some new things in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Right? So, so it's, it, it's so amazing to me. The more we speak in tongues, the greater faith arises. The greater our faith is established. And we build up our most holy faith. This isn't just basic faith. This is the building of your most holy faith. Faith. Faith to break through. Faith to change things. Faith to get over stuff. Faith to overcome fear. Faith to overcome situations. Faith to overcome sin. Faith to overcome uh, circumstances. Faith to come over problems. Faith to overcome all the things that you face in your life and that I face in my life. Faith to establish His language in your life. Let me say this. What's the size of the structure you're building? See, sometimes you might feel like an old wooden shack. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. And when, if you feel like an old wooden shack, what are you building? Nothing. Right? What are you living from? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. The more we pray in the Spirit, we should be building 
the tallest buildings. The Empire yeah. State. Right? Okay. Right? Skyscrapers and, and you know, all those things. That, that, that's what we're doing when we're praying the Spirit. We're actually building our spirit, man. We're building us to be bigger than the enemy. And the enemy's not people. The enemy is a spiritual thing, right? It's, it, you know, it's the demonic realm. It's Satan. It, that's the lies, the wounds. right. The lies, the wounds, the hurts. Those are all the, the the enemy, right? Our flesh. You know, all those types of things. Now, watch this. This is really powerful. Think about the Israelites seeing the giants, and how did they view themselves? Grasshoppers, right? Right. Think about it. We can speak in tongues, mm -hmm. which means we are building ourselves bigger than the giants we may face. Amen. Amen. The more we pray in the Spirit, the bigger we become against the giants we're facing. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I've seen this in the Spirit. And uh, I don't know, I, I know, I know Allison has too and, and stuff, but, but uh, I've seen in the Spirit that I am bigger than I am in the natural. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in the spirit, yeah. you know, that, that, that I, I see myself as this huge, huge giant in the spirit. And, and, uh, uh, you know, and then what I begin to see is that all the situations I'm facing are tiny wow. because, because we're building something, right? When you pray in the spirit, you start to realize that, that because your spirit never sleeps, say my spirit my spirit. Never, sleeps. Never, Never sleeps. And so what happens is, is when you're sleeping in the natural, you can still be praying in the spirit and not even be aware of it mm -hmm. in the natural. Mm -hmm. We've seen this happen, Ellie and I. You know, where, where you know, you'd be like, you know, sleeping and the one, one of you will wake up and you'll hear the other person praying in the spirit and you'll go, hey, Allison, Allison, are you awake? You know, or you say something and she doesn't hear you, right? Because her spirit man is just speaking, Right. And, and, and so I believe that, you know, in those, in those times, uh, you know, that we're sleeping, you know, that the more we pray in the Spirit, the more that begins to manifest, uh, you know, during, you know, the times that we're sleeping. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, be encouraged, right? But let me, just, let me just bring this to a close. We are called to speak in tongues. But I want to challenge you and I tonight to not only speak in tongues, but engage yourself to the Holy Spirit. Engage your sight. Engage your ears, engage your senses to the Holy Spirit, and let the rivers flow like they've never flowed before. It is time to see. It is time to hear. It is time to manifest what has been spoken in the Spirit. Let the language of faith arise. Let the language of hope arise. And let the language of love arise in you tonight. And let the river flow. That's really the heart of God. He wants that river to flow. Right? You know, being Father's Day, you know, and in John chapter 14, where Jesus said, I will pray the Father and he will send you another helper. That another helper wasn't just the helper to indwell you. That helper was to help you communicate the language of God. That helper was there. It, it is there. To help you speak in tongues. That, that helper is there to help you speak the deep things of God. That helper is there to help you become all that you've been called to become. And to build your most holy faith by praying in the Spirit. If you've never, you know, prayed in the Holy Ghost, all you got to do is very simple. You know, we make it so complicated. Just open your mouth and let God fill it. According to Psalm 81, open your mouth wide. And let him fill it. Make room for him. Make room. And it may sound confusing to your to your natural mind. It may sound confusing to your to your natural emotion. It may sound confusing to the person sitting next to you that isn't baptized in the Spirit. But let me tell you, it's not confusing to God. It's not confusing to your spirit man. It's actually pulling your spirit man up and causing your spirit man to rise above your soul and to live from a new dimension with new expectancy. Mm -hmm with new hope, with new life, with new love, and with new faith. So I just want to challenge you tonight. Will you receive the baptism of the Spirit? Will you say, Lord, I open my mouth. Will you say, Lord Jesus, come and baptize me with Holy Spirit and with power.
Yeah, just let him. And then open your mouth, and he'll fill it. He'll fill it with his utterance. Hallelujah. Nami kani tiana mama tukori. Soti nani batikiala baria suku ramamandi. Sukuto tiana la baba niano koroma mo sukoti kie. Gorama mama tie toro mo shikara mo moko sukori mi mi I just see right now in the spirit, I just see some that, that you know, you, you've been praying and, and you've been believing, uh, you know, but it just hasn't uttered out of your mouth and you've questioned, you know, is this, is this really what God has for me? Is this really the gift God wants for me? I just encourage you right now, open your mouth and by faith begin to move your mouth and let the utterance of the Holy Ghost come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for tonight. And I thank you for those that are going to continue to develop and build their spirit, man. Build their spiritual immunity to rear up and come up over their situations and circumstances. In the mighty name of Jesus. Well, we love you lots. God bless you. Be encouraged tonight. Be strengthened. And we look forward to seeing you next Sunday night, uh, either here at the house, 125 Blackburn uh, Drive, or um, online, uh, Facebook Live, starting at 6 o'clock with some worship. Um, and then 6.30, the message. God bless you. Be encouraged. Look forward to seeing you Tuesday night as well on Zoom or at our house, 125 Blackburn Drive. God bless you. Love you lots. Be blessed. In Jesus.